So hi everybody. Uh, you know everything already. <laughs> so I am Jana, and I am very happy to be here with you to tell you about my work uh, and my passions. Uh, I am an astronomer, which means that uh, not only I made my dreams come true, but I am paid for that. <laughs> and as you know, I wanted to be an astronomer since I was a kid. When I was six, I was already able to read and write and I was planning my future, because planning is one of my habits. I love planning. So I wanted to do something unusual, something which is like a crossing the limits, going beyond. But uh, I wanted to do something which is also not very useful. You cannot apply it easily, but it cannot be mathematics. So it's getting complicated, right? But I, I was a kid. <laughs> and very soon, I concluded that the only thing which can actually satisfy me is uh, astronomy. So when I was six, before going to school, I decided that my life must be connected this way or another to stars. So now you must be thinking what really I do for a living. I am looking at stars. Well, yes, I am looking at stars. <laughs> Maybe you have heard about the recent discovery of the second Earth. It's like uh, 12 days ago. Second Earth uh, is a planet. It's like our planet, our Earth. It's slightly bigger, but uh, it's not a part of our solar system. It's a planet uh, which is orbiting another star in the sky. That planet was discovered uh, by the NASA Kepler Space Mission. The Kepler Space Mission is a telescope. You can see it there. But uh, um, comparing to the ground-based telescopes, it's, uh, the big difference is that it's in space. It looks quite similar. There's a telescope, all the uh, instruments, equipment, but uh, you cannot live on this uh, um, facility. There is no oxygen. There is only the computer and the telescope. And as far as I know, they do not complain of that, not uh, <laughs> in public. So this is the data which we have, and NASA uh, the Kepler team is working on the data in order to di discover new planets. But discover, discovering a planet and saying whether it's possible to live on it, there are two different things. So what basically happens when NASA discovers a planet, uh, they call us, the ground-based support, which is uh, me also, and they say, hi guys, so we have uh, five nice planets. Can you <laughs> check uh, whether they are a good place for vacation? Can you go there? <laughs> So uh, what we need to do, we need to check the stars. Of course, we cannot go to the stars that are too far. So I need to use a ground-based this time, ground-based uh, telescope, and find the, the star in the sky. So I try to find this blue one, but this one is too hot. It's definitely too hot. And the red one, not good. It's too cold. But look at this yellow. It's like our sun, and also the planet it's like our Earth, and uh, the distance between the star and the planet makes it a good place to live. Maybe the life is really existing on that planet. We need to check it. So this is uh, what my work is related to. I observe in stars, and I say whether they are a good place to visit. <laughs> and uh, in order to facilitate all these works, uh, last year I applied to the European Commission uh, for a scientific grant. And uh, it was my first attempt to apply for the European Commission, and the project was big. It involved uh, scientists uh, from several countries, and uh, it was accepted. <laughs> so now I am coordinating that uh, big project, and it consists basically on uh, exchanging scientific stuff between seven countries in Europe, the US, and uh, Australia. But uh, uh, it may be surprising, I do not have any particular profits for that, because from in this particular uh, call, coordinates uh, are kind of non-profit organization. <laughs> but uh, if you meet another astronomer in your life, they will confirm what I am going to say now, that astronomers love working for free. <laughs> we are really perfect slaves. <laughs> so why are we doing this? Because it's so nice to know that we work all together and uh, that my work can be useful for the other people to make their life nicer, that they can go to places which uh, they might have never visited if not this call. This is what makes me happy, but not only this. 
Apart uh, from my scientific, pure scientific uh, research, I am also uh, involved in educational outreach. For example, I don't know if you know, in Wrocław we have a planetarium. It was built, uh, as you may guess, from our own resources. We didn't have any <laughs> external support. And the first dome, which you can see here, was uh, fixed, or I, I helped in fixing it, with my own hands. Taking into account that I have problems with fixing buttons, it was <laughs> quite a challenge. <laughs> now we have a new dome. I don't know why, actually. <laughs> Anyhow, it's new. <laughs> you can come and see how nice uh, talks, how nice uh, presentations you can uh, uh, listen to, you can see there. At this place, it is quite uh, easy to find. It's just behind uh, the Institute of Astronomy, the place at which I work. But it's not all. Apart uh, from uh, giving talks in planetarium, I also participate in school workshops on astronomy. It's a really great idea, and if you want your kids uh, to enjoy science, to see the sun in 3D, or to discuss really, seriously, how to make barbecue on Mars, <laughs> or to build with their own hands a real facility which can really detect cosmic rays, and then this facility detects those cosmic rays, this is the place you should uh, sell them. Or maybe sometimes we feel like uh, keeping your child outside all night long. You know, the night is long, it's cold, the home is far, the wood is close and it's dark. Well, if you give them a telescope, they will love you for that. <laughs> because uh, on the top of that, these uh, workshops on astronomy take place in the, one of the darkest places in Poland. It's called uh, the Dark Sky Park. And now you may think, uh, what we are going to keep there in dark sky parks. Maybe dark sky. Uh, yes, <laughs> this is what you can find there. So is it useful? Is it interesting for the body? Let's think about this. Think about people who build the pyramids. People who build the Great Wall in China. About our uh, medieval kings who also had their hobbies. All those people were able to look at the sky and the sky for them was like a black velvet with diamonds. Now, if you look on the sky, especially in Wrocław, you should be happy if you see one star and you do not mistake it for a satellite. And it is not the fault of the sky. The sky didn't change. It's us who did. If you look at a map of Europe, which is uh, just, it's just a photo made uh, by night, you can see it's bright as a supermarket. So if you want to see those stars, those diamonds, these stars which are available to people, let's say, 500 years ago, there is no way you can do it. No price you can pay. Unless you are rich enough to switch off all the continent. And I do not mean Antarctica, no. <laughs> so now, the ability to see the stars and uh, to have at least a part of uh, sky which is kind of dark starts to be kind of a national uh, treasure, which is why we set up that uh, park not that long time ago. And all these uh, fascinating projects which I told you about, these European uh, projects, uh, planetarium, uh, dark sky park, school workshop on astronomy, they all take place because of the initiative of a handful of people who are really fascinated uh, with their own works and who are happy to share their ideas with the others. And now you should think about other astronomers. There is like 200 uh, of them in Poland, maybe 500 students of astronomy. They are all crazy for what they are doing. But uh, it is still only about work. Astronomers can also have hobbies. <laughs> I wonder if you can guess uh, what uh, kind of hobby I have. What I am really fascinated with is philosophy and martial arts. And uh, this philosophy, which I was inspired uh, really very deeply, is uh, Taoism. It's a Chinese uh, ancient philosophy, because, uh, and uh, it's so interesting for me because, uh, like any other, it uh, approaches issues connected with uh, what the, the reality is, what the very existence is made of, what is the origin 
of the universe. And their answers, their ideas, are really very close to modern ideas uh, of cosmology. And the basis uh, of uh, Taoism is uh, so-called yin and yang, which can be translated as the greatest uh, difference, which means that um, we find the difference between white and black, weak and strong, etc. Then you understand uh, that they must be in balance, and then we can uh, use this idea in our own life to make it be in balance. And the practical application of uh, Taoism is uh, Tai Chi, which is uh, one of uh, the Chinese Kung Fu styles. You might think that uh, Tai Chi must be strange since it uh, originated uh, from philosophy. Well, I'm afraid you are right. <laughs> it is a little bit weird. For example, look at uh, that. What you can see, uh, there are some strange looking people moving slowly and doing some strange things. You would be surprised to know that they move slowly only to make you think that they are really peaceful. What they do is practicing very slow motion, real fight. And uh, because uh, Tai Chi people love uh, keeping everything in secret, this is the first secret of Tai Chi. They practice fighting, but you think that they are dancing. They are ready to kick you, but they look like almost sleeping. <laughs> so, you know. These are just philosophers. And even if you really want to fight with them, it will not be easy. First, I will start from, do we really have to fight? Cannot we live in peace? But you say, no, no way, we need to fight. So they say, uh, OK, I can see you insist, but I am not going to lose all my day on you. Uh, okay, we will do it uh, my way. You will approach and uh, attack me. And uh, I will take all your power, reverse it, and push it towards you. And uh, when you are just about falling down, I will kick you. I don't recommend fighting with Tai Chi people. <laughs> Anyhow, I don't want to uh, think, uh, I, I don't want to uh, make you think that all Tai Chi people want is to trick you and kick you. I want uh, you to. Well, find a nice connection between Tai Chi and uh, space missions. Because we use this approach, this trick and kick, in order to travel through the solar system. When we launch a spacecraft, from the very beginning, from the very first second, this spacecraft has to fight. It has to fight against the gravity force of the Earth, of the Sun, of all the planets. And if we now think about this spacecraft as about this enemy, and uh, these planets as the Tai Chi masters, when the spacecraft is approaching one of them after another, it's receiving kicks. And you can see it here. Venus, the uh, first velocity increase, then Venus again and Earth, the next one, and finally Jupiter. And in this uh, dense region, there, are, there is a Saturn with its moons. So when the spacecraft uh, is approaching the planet, the planet is adding um, an energy to it so that uh, this spacecraft can uh, travel with uh, higher speed, higher energy. And you know, uh, when traveling through the solar system, these uh, machines, because they sent uh, photos to us, they can see amazing stuff. And uh, we astronomers are really used to amazing stuff, of course. <laughs> but we are not used to seeing things like that. It's Iapetus. It's one of the Saturn's moons. And um, it's really particular. It's looking like that because one half of its surface is as white as the snow, and the other one is as black as the coal. And it's because uh, it's constructed like that. It's not an illusion. So why it's looking like that? Why is it looking like this yin-yang um, symbol of Taoism? Do you know? Also, astronomers don't know, but never mind. I just thought that maybe astronomers don't know, you do. No worry. <laughs> it's looking like that uh, maybe because the universe is saying, oh, I notice you like Taoism. I like it too. Um, I have something for you. No, oh, it's not a big, uh, it's a moon. I will put it. Uh, I will put it close to Saturn. Saturn is really great. You know, all these rings, it will be looking marvelous if you have all of them together. Isn't it beautiful? Well, actually it is, because all astronomy 
is about beauty. And now you can make this beauty a part of your own life. You can visit our planetarium and uh, look how traveling through the solar system is nice. You can go to the dark sky park and see not pale and faint spots, but real diamonds of the sky. You can see the galaxy. And then you can try thinking about your own life. People who I mentioned uh, realize they have big ideas. You can do it too. But to do that, first you need to find them in yourself and then try to find these points of connection between your world, inner world, and uh, the outer space. And having achieved that, you will be able to find yourself as a part of a big picture. Because indeed, we are a part of a big picture. This big thing is called the universe. It's infinite, it's eternal, and it's beautiful. Thank you.